many matters that require my attention, Cavalier. The life of a dungeon master is not an easy one. Welcome to the Pixel Pop Movie Podcast. I'm your host this fortnight, Toby. With me this fortnight, I'm joined by the level 3 barbarian with a certain amount of rages per day, Ethan. That sounds like me, yeah. Yeah. And the, you mean I only get one magic missile per day, Ryan. Like, one magic missile will do most of the time, but you can always use more. <laughs> Ah, uh, dear, this fortnight we're going to be looking at all the news, trailers, TV show gossip and jazz. There's quite a bit. Not as much as some previous weeks, but quite a bit. Uh, we're also going to be doing a spoiler-free uh, look at Jessica Jones, and then we might sort of dip into some spoilers after that, but we'll give you a fair warning before we jump into that. Um, and just because we're suckers for punishment, uh, the topic of conversation this fortnight is movie adaptations well and let's be fair here movie and and tv show slash cartoon uh, adaptations of tabletop role-playing games it's pretty niche um there's probably a reason for it uh but we're gonna dive into that for better or worse but before we get started on all of that let's start with the news please take us away ethan now we've had a bit of a drought with marvel news lately so thankfully we have some today and that is marvel shang chi shortlist has reportedly been revealed Mm. It includes um, uh, Ludi Lin, I think is how you pronounce his name. He was uh, the Black Ranger in the recent Power Rangers movie, and you could also see him in the Striking Vipers episode of Season six, no, season 5 of Black Mirror. He's apparently uh, up for the role of Shang-Chi, but also Ross Butler, who I think is from Riverdale, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, he's from Riverdale. And also Donnie Yen is apparently up for a supporting role too. Nice. He's always good. Yeah. And I think this is the movie that might be rumored to be filming in Sydney. Yeah, at, that would make uh, sense. Because uh, with Disney's acquisition of Fox, they, they got their movie studio they have down there. So I think this is looking to film down there. It's either this one or Eternals. It's one of those two that are filming down in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, next, apparently, we have a movie adaption of Django slash Zorro is in the works. Yeah. So this Which is, is really weird. Apparently, it's a comical. It's a comical reading, but right. Quentin Tarantino has apparently hired Jared uh, Carmichael, who's known for comedy. He was in the last Transformers movie, Just Gone, I think. He had his own TV show. Yeah, so he's been brought on from Quentin Tarantino, chosen apparently to write the script for the movie. Okay, because wasn't like the last Zorro we had um... Antonio Banderas? Antonio Banderas and Catherine yeah. Zeta Jones. Yeah, a yeah, right. while ago. So, I mean, if we get both of Antonio and Jamie Foxx back, I mean, this would be a pretty decent movie, I'd say. It could, it could definitely be a good one. Because, I mean, Django was really good. So, this could definitely be pretty good. Yeah, I well, guess we'll wait and see. Early days. Yeah. Uh, next, we have some Netflix news, and that is the Russo brothers, known for their work on the Avengers movies and Captain America, are uh, adapting Magic the Gathering for an animated Netflix series. Yeah, right. I am so cautiously optimistic about this. Well, apparently, I think it was a while back. I think maybe even when we were doing, we first started the podcast, there were news that yeah, we had the rumors rights, that the movie rights for like a live action movie series. Yeah, and yeah, we, now we kind maybe of knew something was coming. This. Yeah. yeah, and that's fine. I think probably animated is probably a smart move. One, obviously, oh, yeah, definitely. in terms of budget, but two, in terms of what you can do, it's going to be a lot yeah. easier. And and Netflix I mean, aren't going to dump the, the. I mean, to do Magic: The Gathering as a live action, the the money, amount of money it would have take to do it properly is just staggering. Like the special yeah. effects budget. So, well, I mean, you have, I think um, it's fine. Yeah, the Russos are uh, executive producing. Apparently, this is like a, a passion project for them to like get this up and running. Um, but they have writers who have worked on Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars, The Tick, uh, Weird City, a um, uh, guy who worked on uh, Into the Spider Verse is on board as a supervising director and co producer. So yeah. it, it's got some people behind it that could definitely make it work. And I mean, Netflix really wants to get into a lot more anime. I mean, they have the Castlevania series on there as well. This could be, in the, you know, the same style as that. Maybe. I think it's yeah. good move for Yeah, it is, definitely. Well, so I, I'm excited the, to see where it goes. You've also got the new D&D movie coming out in 2021 as well, allegedly. So, what? yeah, that's been on the pipeworks for a while. I doubt that's coming out in 2021. It hasn't even started filming yet, has it? Well, US release, release date at the moment is July 23, 2021. 
what's interesting is it's it's got um, Joe Manganiello uh, as the story story uh, okay. right? So who's a big yeah, ad- he, and, he and Vin are like mad D and D advocates. So yeah, well, uh, you're right. <laughs> but you know, Joe Manganiello is Vin Diesel is questionable apparently. Sure. Well, Joe seems to be a bit more open about it, I guess. But yeah. Well, you know, or Joe Manganiello said that he thinks that Vin Diesel's a little shit. So. Well, maybe it's but, just a bit of smack talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, next, we have Monty Python has been forced to split for good after Terry Jones has been diagnosed with dementia, which is obviously pretty sad news considering they are working on something very recently as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a shame. I think it was some like anniversary special or something that they've been working on end of last year, maybe start of this year. So whether or not yeah. that comes out or yeah, what happens with that now, we're not sure. Yeah, apparently it's bad enough that most days he doesn't remember his name. Like, it's really bad. Yeah. So. Oh, well. That sucks. It's sad, yeah. Uh, here's one Toby put in, but a Punky Brewster sequel TV show oh, is shit. apparently in the works. Oh, shit. I have no, no idea yeah. who Punky Brewster is because yeah, you would me. Way yeah, before you. Okay, so in the 80s, it was a TV sitcom. And yeah, Punky Brewster is this, like, I don't know, whatever she was, 12 year old girl with attitude. It was sort of like the American, you know, um, rebuttal to the British Marmalade TV show, which you probably also missed. But she was pretty cool. Um, and she had, like, lunch boxes and stuff. And it's got around the same time as I think Alf and those sorts of shows were on TV. And uh, yeah, she Fuck had a bit self. of a following. You're right. <laughs> Elf. Really? Oh, oh even the I know Alf. Elf. You don't know Alf. He's Just Google him, ALF. ALF. No, no, I'm kidding. I know what Alf is. Right. Right. He was on Pogs. <laughs> right. There you go. I only had Simpsons Pogs, all right? But anyway, yeah, the actress is now like in her 40s, and she also tweeted that, uh, or Instagram, that she was, you know, it had been confirmed that it was happening, and they're just sort of looking to lock in the last, you know, few details. But uh, it's the same actress returning. And sort of picking up where she's now a single mum and yada yada. So that's kind of neat. I don't know if we need it. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it's neat. Well. Yeah, I mean, but I guess like we're they're running out of ideas, so they're just rebooting stuff out of the eighties. But yeah, I mean, it's neat. It's like, it's like I remember when I was a little kid, and my mother was telling me that basically all the children's shows I had were garbage, and what she kept talking about was like banana splits or something, and it's being remade into a horror movie now. Hey. Really, oh, really fuck? bottom of the bin. That, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, it. Well. Like, yeah. Isn't Wizard it's, of Oz coming out as a horror film now, Ethan? Or, or spin off was meant to be a horror? Be oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of weird shit, yeah. Mm. Next, we had a trailer for Ad Astra, a new right. movie starring Brad Pitt. Now, I haven't, I haven't watched the trailer at all. I've got no idea what this is about. Um, okay, so about? Short, short, yeah, short version is. Uh, his father, who I think is Tommy Lee Jones in this, uh, goes like sends, is a mission that goes out into space to do like to to save the world or do some shit like that. And power trips loses the plot, so they send Brad Pitt, who's his son, out to go and stop him and save the world. Alrighty. Is the real short version I got from watching the trailer? It looks okay. Save the world while saving your dad sounds a bit kind of yeah. Well, all right. Either, either way. Yeah, either one. Fucking yeah. nice. Yeah, but yeah, it looked okay. I mean, it's Tommy Lee Jones, as I said, I'm pretty sure it was Tommy Lee Jones and, and Brad Pitt. You know, the cast looked okay. Yeah, uh, cast is Tommy Lee Jones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, next, we had a trailer for, or well, another trailer for Shaft, the new Shaft movie. Yeah, I'm not seeing good reviews for this online. No. Uh, Same as Men in Black, through the new Men in Black, apparently it had an opening weekend that was like, under 30 mil domestic like for us like it was terrible apparently yeah that's what i heard i didn't hope, hope that it was gonna be you know yeah amazing by any chance. I, I didn't have like i didn't expect it to be a blockbuster but everything i've read it looks so much worse than i thought well it's made it hasn't made its budget back which yeah. is never a good start. Well, it's, it's in between. Yeah, it says the budget's 94 to 110 million. It's made 103. Yeah. I think the so shaft, though, is... I'll probably watch this, like, on Netflix or whatever. It's a homey kind of streamy jobby. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's a go-see-at-the-cinema kind of jobby for me. But, yeah. 
next we have apparently Sigourney Weaver has said that both her, Bill Murray, and Dan Aykroyd will be back for the new Ghostbusters movie. I'm right. so excited at that announcement. I can care too less about this but i know a lot of people love uh, ghostbusters ethan's ethan's actually like a, a closet bill murray fan so he tries oh, to not no, overreact like, I, I forgot the bill murray thing but uh, i mean the I question is the question oh, yeah. is where is ernie hudson in all this i mean he was in the the all ladies kind of... it's about this fucking movie or any any of this anymore just fucking let it die yeah because you know we're here to watch send us the way of the fucking dark universe or the fuck it was called all right yeah okay so, oh, so we'll just so we can get back to skyline four <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. that's what the money's right. at toby all right <sighs> all right so from like normal human beings this is this is a great get you've got you've basically got the, the original team back on 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 board and i'm sure they're people. gonna talk to eddie yeah i'd also like they to see should... um the receptionist who was in the the all lady remake and the, uh, what was his name? The the sort of snotty node guy with the glasses who's their accountant. You know uh, what I'm talking about. Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, right. No, in the original. Yeah, oh, the original. I know the one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I um, time, but... but I also saw they said that they've dug up some archival footage of Ramus to put in as well as things that weren't seen before. So oh, nice. I will be interested to see how they do that. There's Surely a, a ghost. trend of digging people up to put in movies and it hasn't always worked well but you know maybe maybe we get lucky this time i mean i'm sure these movies are not be that bad i mean if you got rid of bill murray you'll be all right because he's overrated as fuck anyway so sick bait mate <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it going right? it's a theme with the podcast to you know yeah, 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 shit yeah. on bill murray i gotta keep yeah, it going yeah yeah, yeah. Right, okay. am, am i, I gonna be it? the only person here that sits there waving their bill murray flag going he's not that bad no toby's like that i'm pretty sure lucas is the same yeah, everyone likes Bill Murray except Ethan. Yeah. Real monster. I've seen I've seen Kingpin and Zombieland, that's it. Watch Groundhog Day. Oh, I don't want to watch it. One of those, one of those movies that everyone says like, oh, watch this. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to watch it because the kids can't recommend it. Because so. it's good. Like so I don't, I don't want to watch good movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look, Skyline, I, I watch Skyline, good movies. Skyline 4 is on Netflix. Better better line that one up. You know what? You did start this with calling us gloves for punishment. Really, just Ethan and his hatred of Bill Murray. He's punishing himself. He deserves oh, this. I'll stream myself watching Skyline for 24 hours straight. There we go. That's what I'll do. Just to prove that it's a great movie. That's a good way to the get followers. The next charity event, Skyline <laughs> yeah, yeah. for all the All right. Tell me, about, tell me about Black Adam. Uh, well, he's Black Adam. Mm. He's being played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson Maui. Mm-hmm. And apparently they have a director for it, and it's also the director of Jungle Cruise, which also stars Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. Apparently he has signed on as the director for Black Adam, which means that production will probably like kick into gear next year. I would assume. Yeah. Which I also did see Zachary Levy said that Shazam Two is going to start filming end of this year or start of I next year. I did see that too. Yeah, I'm keen. Yeah. To so Shazam was a very big sleeper hit for thing. It was very good. Everyone thought it was going to be shit. I thought it was going to be shit from the first trailer. But I, I thought it was going to be good from the first thought, trailer. Yeah, I, it's, it this looks alright. Uh, I, I didn't like the look of it. <laughs> yeah, but you're a miserable yeah. shit, Ethan. I, sh- I shit you're on it on the podcast, much. but yeah. I don't like to get my hopes up about stuff. So I'll shit on oh, it and if it looks bullshit. good. Oh bullshit! <laughs> what do you mean bullshit? A, that's a straight up line. You froth at anything with Marvel written on it. Because I know it's going to be good. DC hasn't oh, got a good track no. record, oh, so you know. No, no, no. Okay. It's, 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 it's fair to be cautiously optimistic about their movies, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, but like, now they've set the bar pretty high. So just, Iron Man 3, right? They just right? discount everything. <laughs> they've, they've had, I mean, Darkwell. DC's Darkwell. had like four good movies. you got Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Aquaman, and Shazam. They're the only good ones. All the rest are a bit eh. Aquaman shit. Anyway, moving on. Aquaman's and, right. and shit, Batman shit. No, you're shit. I mean, you shut up, too. You, you wake me. <laughs> but no, this could be good. So, who knows if we're going to get Black Adam before Shazam, which means we might actually get an appearance, or if they're both filmed at the same time, we could get a teaser for Black Adam and Shazam 2, which then could lead into Shazam 3. Who knows? Who knows with DC? Who knows what they're going to pop out and fuck up or not do? Yeah. We'll find out. It'd be like Black Adam versus the Swamp Thing. Versus Joker. I'd pay to see it. 
Um, next we have Michael Rooker has joined the cast of the Dark Tower TV show, which is apparently filming over in Europe. No word on who he's playing. Hopefully it's a hell of a lot better than the cast. fucking the movie. This was great. What the hell? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told you not to sniff glue before you start the podcast. But it's just so tempting, Toby, okay? Yeah, right? Stop eating your clag. <laughs> nah, and that movie was fucking atrocious, whether you'd read the book or not, books or not. No, it wasn't. It was good. No, it, was, it wasn't. I stand by my statement like, and saying it was out of shit. Anyway, they're doing a TV series that's, yeah. I believe, is actually a prequel where, or is it, no, it's set after the movie? I can't remember. Yeah, one of them, I don't know, but it's, it's pretty much like Michael Rooker's probably the biggest name person in the movie, or in the in series, the series. Yeah, well, they haven't released Let me just have a look. Yet. I don't think they've released the I mean, it's, it's going to Amazon, too. Hmm. I noticed they just got Venom as well, like Amazon's starting to get some content up. Uh, Jerome Flynn as well. They've been oh, lagging um, behind for a while. They kind of need to get a few things. They nah. had the tech, Run. and I was like, yeah, and then... Don't worry about Amazon, man. they got more money than... than... They're fine. They're fine. They're know, anyway. they got Expanse. That's probably, like, one thing everyone likes about it. Yeah, I mean, Men on High Castle is good. It is good. I agree. Um, yeah, so uh, Jerome Flynn's in there as well. Bron from Game of Thrones. He's in the Dark Tower series, but that's all I know. Yeah, he still only does. Yeah. Um, next, Doom, the Sisterhood TV show, is apparently uh, going to be coming to one immediate streaming service. Not they decided to cancel a whole bunch of other streaming stuff and all combine them into one and just fuck up a bunch of TV shows. Yeah. Because Warner Brothers and DC still don't know what the fuck to do. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a Dune TV series. Yeah, with, which uh, is Dennis which is gonna live in Avenue Venus as the uh, <laughs> executive producer. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Yeah, Villeneuve. so after he's finished with the movies, he's gonna move over and do this TV show. So that's awesome because then you're gonna have the same director and you're gonna have some more sort of continuity, I guess. So this is and good. It's, it's nice to have him doing both because it means he won't have like it's one of the big problems I've had with a few of the Marvel TV shows where just the style is so different from the movies oh. to the series. But mm, they can be together. Mm. Oh, you're kidding me. So they've got John Spates on as a writer. I'm just looking at his Trek history. I thought he was shit because I saw the mummy there. But he did Doctor Strange and Prometheus, so he's alright. Which the mummy? The new mummy with Tom Cruise. Hey, the... you watched that. You watched that on I watched that. Yeah, I regretted watching I, it. I, I didn't. I also shit. watched it, but... I can't. I said that was the most worst movie I've ever seen in my fucking life. I said that that I regretted watching that movie. I know I made. I know I fucked up and made a mistake on that one. All right. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> uh, we're also getting Love, Death, and Robots has been renewed for a season two by Netflix, which is yep. great. First yep. season was great. I loved it. it wasn't for me. I mean, I could appreciate you didn't like it. It, it just. No, I, it's not. That, mm -hmm. It's like I could look at it and go, this is, 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 it's sort of like, you know, you can watch a film or read a book and go, it's, it's probably good, but it's just not me. It's not connecting with me or resonating with me. Well, or, or was it like all of them or just some of them that fell out there? Because I mean, I some of them halfway, were pretty I, shit. I got about halfway through. I mean, admittedly, straight off the bat, I'm not an anime person. So that was going against it. Like I looked at it and went, some of these stories are okay. Some of the animation is okay. Some of it's just terrible. But I got, it just, it just lost me because I'm not into that kind of genre, I guess. Which I guess is fair. Like, there was definitely a few parts where I didn't want to finish that story, but the ones before have been good enough, I want to keep going. And I finished the whole thing and got to the end, and oh, look, I was happy I watched it all. Now I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I, mean, I, felt, I felt some of it was trying to be intentionally edgy, which kind of rubbed me up the wrong way, too. I think that was a lot of the criticism yeah. the series got as well, from, like, uh, critics and that. Was yeah, sort of like just... here's all these boobs because boobs. And yeah. Sort of like it doesn't. You don't need that to tell a good story. It's sort of like you're trying to shock me with your boobs and gore, and I've seen your boobs and gore before, and it just yeah. You, you just how about you tell me a good story instead? Yeah. It's kind of like you know Game of Thrones. You kind of got fatigued with all the boobs and gore in that too, because it was like just just tell did me you? a freaking good story. I did. Yeah. yeah oh, I stopped. Okay. I stopped. I stopped batting off about halfway through season four. <laughs> <laughs> Where Next we got? have uh, Remy Malek almost appeared in Rocket Man, considering that Dexter Fletcher, who directed Rocket Man, also did the reshoots for, he for Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I actually watched Bohemian Rhapsody pretty recently, and I wasn't—I didn't think it was actually that good of a movie, to be honest. But 
It's because you're a miserable shit, but we established I'm that. I'm not a miserable shit, okay? You I, are a miserable shit. Credit where it's due, but it wasn't that great. Mm-hmm. I never saw it. It didn't, yeah, it didn't kill any strings for me. Yeah. Next, we have a trailer for Doctor Sleep, which is a sequel to The Shining, I think, yep. is it? Yep. yep. I've never seen The Shining. I don't know. I yeah, I know. Another either. one of those movies you, you're not going to ever watch, but you should. No. Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick at his oh, finest, man. Stanley Kubrick at his finest. Couldn't give two fucks about Stanley Kubrick, to be That's honest. That's right. He doesn't give a fuck about you. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Mainly because he's dead. Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah. He can't listen to us. Doesn't matter. That's at least 90% of why he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that 10% is like, he's like, oh, I fucking eat. Specifically eating from beyond Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, obviously, fans of the original movie or people who have read the original book and the Doctor Sleep book uh, are going to be down for this. Some casting looks pretty solid in it. Uh, I'd be interested to see if they've got original cast members returning. Uh, because, well, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but there's there's the possibility of, it, depending on how close they follow the book, stuff could get interesting. Obviously, if you've watched that trailer, you'll see, and you've seen the original film, you'll see that there's a lot of flashbacks and connections to the original film. So that's kind of sweet. That's neat. Uh, we also got a trailer for, I couldn't find it on YouTube, but Netflix emailed it out. They did it. They dropped a trailer for season two of Dark, which is that Norwegian Swedish time travel thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really good. Yeah. So this is, I've been sort of waiting for season two. And now they're in the trailer, they're sort of saying, well, there's going to be a third season as well, because whatever reason. So that should be landing soon. The 21st. So yeah, this week. We also had a trailer come out for Glow season three, and that's out August 9th as well. That's a quite a good series, so watch that too. Hmm. So I almost ran out of news, really. We had another trailer for The Boys. Yes. Coming to Amazon very soon, I think. It's looking 26th good. 26th of next month. I'm actually really looking forward to this. This looks good. Yeah. I mean, are you familiar with the comics? Are we, I know we spoke about that before. Uh, no, I'm not familiar with the comics, no. Hmm. But I kind of know like the gist of it. We've talked about it before. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's so, this trailer looks good. good. Yeah. Even without any knowledge of the comics, the trailer looks good. Like, it's yeah. something worth giving a shot. So, well, I'm interested. Another, you know, maybe a realistic take on uh, superheroes and how the world would actually react to it and all the rest of it. So, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Should be good. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. That'd be one to binge. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's, that's all we had for news. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit quiet. We, we, we had shit all. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That gives us time to sort of um, dive a little deeper into the other subject better. So, yeah, let's have a look at uh, Jessica Jones. Not only the third season, the final season, and also the finale of all of the Netflix Marvel uh, MCU stuff. Um, we won't. We'll start off with spoiler free, of course. Uh, we'll do some clear warnings before we do get into spoilers. Uh, Ethan, you've only seen the first four episodes, so I'm going to let you yeah. sort of start us off with your thoughts so far my thoughts aren't great i'm i'm not enjoying it at all really it's slow to pick up i guess in a way i'm kind of sick of trish i don't think it's a spoiler to say i'm just mm-hmm. sick of trish she's fucking me off i, I sort of got the feeling at the episode for that it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere like this is like ah, oh, this is the last one it's just fucking just do whatever that's that's how i felt anyway I, and i think that that could just be because i know it's the last one so that could be putting me off it as well which yep. could be like you know I, I didn't finish daredevil season three i didn't finish luke cage season two so and i watched two episodes of punisher so marvel ones already dropped off for me just because i just something about them i just wasn't enjoying it. and i think it could just be fatigue for it as well yeah fair enough that's fair yeah yeah we asked i put up a post on our facebook page that asked in terms of the Netflix Marvel stuff, uh, were people happy to see it go or sad we didn't get more? And we had 43 votes with uh, 19% saying happy to see it go, 81% saying sad we didn't get more. So it's um, there's a lot of people that obviously, like yourself, have just sort of got fatigued or perhaps just didn't straight up like what Netflix was delivering in that regards anyway. So... Uh, Metacritic's got season three of Jessica Jones at 64, Rotten Tomatoes at 67, so it didn't rank hugely well. Spoiler free, what are your thoughts, Ryan? You've, you've watched the whole thing, same as me. 
I have watched the whole thing, and I really think the story they did for season three should have been season two instead. It's a big shift. It's a lot slower, as if I'm saying it. It really feels like it's not going somewhere, uh, anywhere at a lot of points. But uh, if you cut through it and you get to the end, it's they did it well. But it really feels like this was all done and decided before they knew there was no next season. And oh, for sure, for sure. This was being filmed quite a while ago. Yeah. Yep, that hurts. That that hurts because they keep. Jessica Jones through the whole thing, and it's been the only one of the, the Marvel TV series I've been really committed to watching. But they've been really good at seeding things that come back, and you can just tell when they were doing that. And when you see them as you're watching it, you know it's not coming back, and you see that and go, "Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> piece of me died." Yeah, fair enough. But um, um... overall, I mean, the choreography throughout the whole thing there it's got some incredible fight scenes as as all the previous seasons have um and just it's it's a look at the the marvel world we don't often get because it's that whole everything is actually terrible sometimes and that's refreshing in a bleak way yeah that's fair that's fair, but I mean, it's yeah. I mean, JJ in the comics too. That's that's the, that's the yeah. Know, that's her thing. That's her thing. Yeah, yeah. I, for me, pre, I, I, Ethan may remember, and I know Lucas. He, he was here. He would he would remember. And this is probably where I'd surprise Lucas. The first, I've never been a big fan of Jessica Jones. Um, the main reason for me is season one. It's it's personal. It, it's all about her and her problems. And then season two, it's again, it's all about her and her problems. And for a long time, what I wanted was. I got sick of following a uh, super who happens to be a private investigator, and I wanted to watch a private investigator who just happens to be a super. If that makes sense, you know. It, it's, yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'd always, and I know when we we reviewed season two, I had said I really enjoyed the scenes where she's just being a private investigator, and I would love to see a series or a show where it's just. Her being a private investigator. It's not personal. It's not about her, her family. It's not about her past. It's just her getting on with the job. You sort of gold silver age comic books where we didn't deal with, you know, alcohols and abandonment and all this crap. It was just heroes fighting crime and getting on with the job. And for the first half at least of season three, that's exactly what you get, which is why it's slower, which is when you compare it to the other shows, say Punisher or Dead or it's a much slower pace. There's a lot less action. But you get that PI sort of angle, which is something I really enjoyed. Yeah, you actually and they have did it really well too. Like they, yeah. it's they're bringing in all all the characters we know and and showing the different ways they've gone, but how they all kind of they're stuck in a way. And even though it's the same people replaying the same stories, they're telling it differently this season than the past ones. And it's just, ah, it's interesting. It kept people for, for the whole time they went through that. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, sort of, you get to about halfway point, two thirds away point, and it, it does become personal, not for Jessica, but that's when it sort of started to lose me again, was when it became, you know, why is every story have to be about, you know, personal growth? That's what bothers me. Uh, you know, you, you can do a film that sort of, or a show that sort of demonstrates a story where a character is sort of evolves, but it's the, the cases that we see in these seasons of Jessica Jones only come about because uh, she's, it's dealing with a very personal matter. You know, like it's sort of the very first episode, you sort of see her on a, a previous case where she's, you know, finding a, a child or whatever. Uh, you know, I, it's not personal. I want to see... That's what I want. I want to see just more of that. It doesn't necessarily have to be because of something that happened to her in the past. She's just doing her job. And, you know, breaking into places or getting... You know, doing the research and doing the investigating and solving the problems. Uh, and in this season, there's actually probably a lot less of Jessica using her powers. I mean, she I think she jumps a couple of times and there's, you know, a bit of fighting. But it's not as much as the previous 
seasons. Not by a long shot. No. Uh, and it's it doesn't the series doesn't suffer for that because no, that, I agree because absolutely. Kind of the upside for her is Jessica Jones' character isn't necessarily interesting when she's punching a hole through a wall. She's interesting when she's sneaking around and, and doing the kind of things that the other guys aren't doing as much, like you know calling the cops and and and, and yeah. stalking people and taking photos and doing regular pi stuff and just yeah. every now and again going yeah but i can also jump up a building so it yeah helps. yeah exactly so that was that that to me was a lot more compelling to watch and a lot more interesting and as i said i i really hoovered up those the first half of the the season the second half was good but it it derailed a little bit into that sort of personal territory which lost me a little bit but um overall for me it was probably the best of all three of the jessica jones I can understand though where it's losing points with viewers simply because it's not an action-packed fiasco. This isn't Punisher or, in fact, it, it this probably has the least action of any Netflix uh, show, I would imagine, this particular season. Easily, I'd say. Yeah, and so you've got people that enjoy Jones that are tuning in going, hey, this is great, Jones, but I think what you've got is the people that we're used to or used to watching the other Netflix stuff, Ching Ying going, wait, where's all the ass kicking and the uppercuts and all this? List? Like, it's just not there. And the worst thing I think looking at this is that it's getting not a really impressive score in reviews. And I think that's going to shape whatever Disney decides to do with their TV series going forward. And I don't like that idea because there was some incredible ideas in this season that really shouldn't die yeah well it's at least two years before disney can do anything so you know by that stage most of the actors will have probably moved on to other projects no i mean like stylistic ideas like oh, right. not yeah. like again it a good superhero tv series doesn't have to be about epic city leveling battles there's yeah, more exactly. interesting stories to tell the time they tried to tell those stories, eh, it didn't learn so well. I don't want people to get scared off by that. I wanted to tell these stories. Give us B grade heroes who can't win a fight and think their way through problems instead. I'd watch it. It'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's quickly uh, dive into some sort of spoilery territory. Uh, you okay? I'm assuming you're okay with us doing that, Ethan, because you're probably not going to watch the rest of it, right? Yeah, I've heard some stuff about it anyway, so it's all good. All right, so if you haven't finished watching season three of Jessica Jones now, uh, scroll on down to the uh, description of this, uh, whether you're on SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever, you'll see the timestamps and you'll be able to skip forward to our uh, topic of conversation. Uh, but if you have seen it all, uh, stick around because let's do some spoilers. Well, they used the mainstream version of Full Killer and I really would have preferred for them to use the Max version, but hey. <laughs> I think it worked well for the series. Yes. To do him as they did. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they used one of the original um, uh, iterations of Full Killer, uh, where he's more of the intelligent, you know, kill. Well, they never drop his name though. They never actually say Full Killer. No, they call him Salinger. The whole yeah. Way through. Yeah. But in in the I've I've spoken about Full Killer before in here to Ethan and Lucas because because it was another character I really enjoyed. But again, it was the the Max version of the character who's quite different. Uh, he's you know he's just 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 as psychotic as uh, it's like Punisher on eleven. <laughs> yeah. and he just he's just brutal. Like he, he I, a couple of the episodes I remember one episode like he, he witnesses a woman getting raped, so he he hacks the guys up and puts them through the kitchen sink blender. Which, you know, I mean, they could do that. They could, they, they could have done that. But I think doing him as the intellectual, the guy who's, I'm smart, I'm not super. Was more of a I threat. Can get around that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, and, and kind of all of the villains have been leading in that because you can't really put in a villain that's super strong because... And it's just it's just a mirror match with Jessica. There's no fun in that. But the people who can think around her and move around her and challenge the not punching thing side of Jessica are where the series was strongest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know the significance of having um, um, 
what's his face? Kill, 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 what's the bloody Tenet's character? Oh, Kilgrave. Kilgrave, yeah, I don't know what the significance was of having his voice sort of crop up at the end. Uh, so, and again, like, uh, that was all a callback to season two of the, uh, her self-doubt manifests as him. Yeah. And that's when I was talking before about they so obviously were planning for another season and because he was he was my favorite thing about the series i love that talent oh he's this and that little thing at the end i was like oh yeah and then it's like series done I'm like wait that was the last episode no but you can't do this to me no yeah oh well hey ethan why are you there did, do you want to quickly look up and find out where the Stan Lee cameo was? Because I missed it. Okay. That was one. I missed it too. Yeah. I'm assuming there was a poster somewhere. There's usually a poster on a wall or something somewhere. Yeah, I've uh, seen it in the other seasons, but I didn't catch it this time. Yeah, there's a poster on a wall. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. So I liked our, uh, our uh, psych... Well, not psychic, I guess, but our, our friend who was able to, um, you know... Ooh, uh, Eric. Yeah, uh, he was, he was a, empath. He was cool. Yeah, I liked the character. He he blended well. He 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 sort of balanced Jessica well. Like he he or what's what I'm looking for? He complimented her well. Yeah, and he really fits into the 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 heroes and and the villains in Jessica Jones are like B grade heroes and villains. They aren't big threats. He's yeah. His power is nifty, and it certainly is useful in what he's doing. But it's not, he's not an Avenger or anything. He's just no. some guy that, his life sucks, Frank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, I think it's just more world building for Jessica Jones to put him in there. But it's, this is the level it's at. This is what they think of as super down with regular people. And well, it's kind of cool. I, I liked it. And he was... Uh, the guy who played him, who uh, no idea who he was, never seen him before. Um, I laughed a lot. He was funny. Yeah, he did part well. Yeah, he um, did part well. And then, uh, having seen all of it, I'm gonna echo Ethan's statement from earlier. Um, I was so sick of Trish by about <laughs> the point Ethan stopped watching, but then it keeps going, and I started just really wishing that they'd moved everything they planned for Trish to season 4 because then it never would have happened and <laughs> probably would have had a better season 3 because of it yeah but I mean I guess it's kind of like you're supposed to not like her but so I mean it's kind of like Breaking Bad and his wife like I don't think you're meant to agree with her are you? no oh, I certainly hope not but it just they kept doing this annoying thing where they show Jessica doing a thing. And then the next episode, the first half of it, is just Trisha's side of the same thing. And it was always the worst start to an episode when it's just things... Yeah, well, it's, I think it's episode like 2 and Trish, episode 11 are all from Trisha's point of view. Which... Mm, yeah. Yeah, look, and I agree. Look, if you're here for... Uh, if you, you know, if, if you're not getting suckered in by the the pi stuff like at 13 episodes this is definitely it definitely drags its feet in places like this could have been uh, i mean it doesn't even introduce its uh antagonist until episode four or five four i think four or five. Yeah, yeah yeah so it really drags its feet this could have been easily compressed down to probably eight episodes uh and, and told a possibly told a better story and and th that's kind of what i've seen before is that Sounder is a good villain, but I really feel that his story should have been earlier. He doesn't feel like progressing the villains much. I honestly think if they had started with him as a, a regular guy who's smart, who thinks he's doing the right thing, but is wrong, throw the, the moral quandary at Jessica, and then finish on Kilgrave instead of start with him, I think the arc, like the narrative arc of the series, could have been better. But I also know why they needed Kilgrave first. So, yeah, ah. yeah I, like he, the dream, the pipe dream for me would have been 
more of a sort of Sherlock thing in that the, the uh, each each episode was a self-contained story of Jessica solving a case, and then sort of in conjunction with that, you find that someone pulling the strings or whatever have you is you know full killer or whatever have you, and and then that's the climactic last couple of episodes. But it would have been you could have told the story of of trish and what she was going through and all the rest of it in more interesting ways rather than she meets her mum for coffee and they talk yeah it does drag its feet like and this is one of the things when you you're trying to do exposition it's often if you watch a lot of films then they get it right they'll do it while the action's taking place to keep you engaged whereas in this show it's it very much stops everything and goes okay it's, it's act it's actually really funny because they keep using the no, Trish has to do her day job as the sales lady thing, which takes her out of the action to go do that. Mm. And it also takes the viewer out of the action to watch yeah. that. And that's all Trish is doing. It's yeah. I don't even think they realized they were doing that. But well, yeah, I don't, it's just there's, yeah, there's too many there's too many unnecessary threads. I mean, you've got Trish's thread, which you could have whittled it down. You've got Hogarth's thread, which is interesting, but it's completely irrelevant to like her and the Kith thing, like it has nothing to do with Full Killer really at all. It it doesn't, and and like it's not that it's a bad story. It's just completely redundant. It's it's it almost is. padding. And it, it, I just yeah, like again, you could have just had an episode after episode of of Jessica solving cases with sort of this overarching storyline. I think would probably have been more interesting. But instead, I think they you can get even do it with with like. Go the supernatural route where you have like yeah. it's a thirteen episode season. S- seven of them are dedicated to the story. Six of them are just Phyllis. whatever. But yeah. the whatever is important in the end. And, yeah. And I think that could have done better, even if they keep it at the length they wanted. You could do better by cutting a lot of the Hogarth and Trish stuff, condensing them down into like an episode and a half each, and then focusing more on the the pi stuff like she has an evil radar use it show us some stuff of jessica using it i didn't want to see it i wanted to see jessica using it it would have been so much more fun be interesting to see how the comic book sales are going post uh the 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 season though i wonder if more people are picking them up i i think they will because so i've been reading a few people talking about it online and a lot of people are basically of the opinion that it's okay but could have been better here's the story in the comics and they all keep referencing to this is where they're pulling the ideas from and i think by doing that they're gonna push people to look into the comics and and i think that's really the best thing they can do knowing that hey the the series is over but let's keep interest in jessica so that when disney gets around to doing stuff they might look this way again because i think that's what i want to come out of this i want disney to see it and go well look people are still in character let's give it a shot yeah all right well we should probably wrap that up i guess we're getting a bit lengthy there ethan what what do you reckon uh in terms of the netflix stuff you'd be keen to see it resurface on hbo or hulu or yeah, Disney. I want to see season three of Iron Fist. That's the least thing. I, that's the one I want to see the least. <laughs> the Fuck black the sheep of the fat. I, I know people want to see Daredevil. I mean, I probably should finish Daredevil because I enjoyed it the most. So, Daredevil I mean, probably not the Daredevil amazing. season will be pretty good. Yeah, I was lucky that Jessica's the one I enjoyed the most. So, you know, I got the last laugh. I only got two seasons of Punisher. That's bullshit too. <laughs> yeah, it was trash anyway. Yeah, just like you. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to our topic of conversation with this fortnight, and that is uh, movies slash TV shows slash cartoons, etc., based upon tabletop role-playing games. Yeah, that's pretty niche. So, I mean, at the moment, from what I can see in my home, and this is obviously only in English, there may be more in, in other languages, but uh, you've got the three Dungeons & Dragons films, and you've got the Mutant Chronicles film, and you have the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon from the 80s. So, here's one I can throw at Ethan, even if he hasn't seen these. Why do movie adaptations of tabletop role-playing games not work and suck? Because movie companies know that it's not going to work. 
unlike video game ones, they still can't get one right. <laughs> See, fucking idiots. So why bother at all? I yeah. Think one of the biggest problems is, is the difference between a video game and a tabletop role-playing game is is how much of yourself can go into it. Like, in a tabletop role-playing game, it's almost complete freedom, and you can't really put that on a screen. And you really feel that, like, I remember watching the, the, the first Dungeons & Dragons movie um, and loving it as a child, but we'll get into that later. But, um, and going like, oh yeah, this is cool, we've played D&D. Oh, did it go like that? No. No. It did not. It could not. We know the stats for dragons. That can't happen. Sigh. You just, you never feel like it can accurately represent the freedom of the world it's trying to. The only good thing in the original Dungeons and Dragons movie is the Tom Baker cameo. Fight me. Oh, no. Jeremy Irons. Why the fuck is Marlon Wayans in it? Because <laughs> he is. <laughs> oh, my God. The comic fuck relief. Is this is yeah, the other I thing. Know, like, like, the fuck? It's, it's a sleeper classic. It, it's <laughs> like the room of game movies. It's... Mm. Because no, they, so because if they made it a straight edge fantasy D and D film, they figured no one would go and see it at all. So they slapped in some comedians to make give it ha ha value. Because well, you, th- that's the thing is, if you make like a, a standard follow the the book by the by Dungeons and Dragons movie, how is it different to any generic fantasy movie out there? D and D is the physical embodiment of generic fantasy, which is what it's great at. It's a movie. You gotta, you gotta do the weird. I think, I think. Uh, well, from from my part in terms of the D and D movies, the second one was probably the most. Um, I felt the most sort of maybe not accurate, but more better re- reflect better better representation of the game. It certainly felt more like D and D than the yeah. others. Um, it was garbage that didn't help the movie at all but it felt more yeah and i don't think we should talk about the book of vile darkness at all no like just just what the hell (laughs) (laughs) it was just softcore porn it was it was terrible it it there's just some movies that shouldn't be and yeah it it ranks right on yeah i think like you're saying because the open nature of a role-playing game it's difficult I, i guess what fans are looking for uh things that tie into what is in those rule books so you know we we know that wizards uh use this you know these particular spells so even in the original DD movie the way they t- talked about magic and use magic we're, you were looking at going what this is this is not no what no. yeah it's... i'm gonna i'm wizard and i'm using priest spells what yeah <laughs> right so so then you've alienated the oh. Well, you've alienated the the, the, the tabletop the role only players. People who would go to see it. Right, and then the generic audience goes, "Wow, this is just a lot of weird ass nerdy crap." So I'm not going to watch it. So you lost yeah, the other half. It's so weird because there's just enough obscure D and D references that they think they'll get people on side for that, but all it is is enough to alienate anyone who doesn't know Dungeons and Dragons. Then the rest is so wrong that everyone who does also won't watch it it's it's a movie with just zero appeal other than jeremy irons <laughs> like if you were to cut him out of that movie unacceptable but no he was all right <laughs> right <Righto. laughs> because jeremy irons has an amazing you know uh uh body of work behind him yeah he's been on the assassin's creed movie yeah, I mean, it's done probably done better <laughs> better stuff theatrically. I would I would argue than on cine- on film. Like I know he's done a lot of stage stuff. He was a good <laughs> Alfred. Yeah, maybe. I don't give me a year. You know who he was. Yeah, but I mean, just Justin Justin Whalen was like the lead. What was that all about? It's look, they, it was a game movie in like a time where gay movies shouldn't have been made they're I mean, allowed to make one or two terrible decisions. he's he's main we're draw still cards in that time were now, by the way. from child's play three and jimmy olsen out of lois and clark that was it I, like child's play three that's i mean i'm sure at least one other person on that went on to something 
Yeah. Well, I have seen Mutant Chronicles as well. Well, I should say I got halfway. Yeah, I got halfway through it. And I've went, seen some of it. Yeah, and went, "What the hell is this shit?" and turned it off. I watched it all. <laughs> you would. Wow. You would. Like years you ago. Years ago. You watched couldn't it all. finish Jessica Jones, but you finished Mutant Chronicles. Yeah. Well, you come out like and, and the funny thing is, it's got a, it's got a good cast. It's like I know, Thomas I was Jane Perlman. And I'm like, how? Yeah, Sean Pertry, John Malkovich. <laughs> Like, I, I reckon I couldn't have gotten through more than 20 minutes of it. And it doesn't matter how good the cast is if none of them want to be there. Like, no, oh, it was... Mm. Of course they didn't want to be there. They just wanted the money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they got fucking loads of that. So it's going to be interesting because, I mean, I suppose I could say you've got the Amazon Lord of the Rings TV show coming out soon. And this is all yep. stuff that Tolkien never wrote. So they're going in you know with their own material and i guess that's going to be a good uh litmus test because you it's the same sort of idea you've got an existing world and then new original content and i i think if you're going to do a dungeons and dragons film or if you're going to do a a you know rifts or any of these popular rpgs whatever it might be uh you, you probably rather than just sandbox create whatever hot garbage you can think of is probably pick a module or a storyline that players are already familiar with. Uh, I and... would watch like a Saw equivalent of the Tomb of Horrors, and I yeah, think that Tomb would of be Horrors an movie series, or Keep on the Borderlands, or whatever it might be. You know, Rise of the Rune Lords for Pathfinder. Like, there's 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 a number of different popular modules that many people have enjoyed, and you could sort of take your own spin on that, and then. Uh, I would I would even think a good good sort of tool if you if you were going to make a film based on a role playing game it would be to run it for groups a dozen groups record it and then you can take all those genuinely spont spontaneous moments and put them in the film so you know you've got twelve groups and how did these twelve people deal with this trap when well, eleven of them were sort of mundane and boring but the twelfth group just had some brilliant kind of response that you never thought of. You could, you could use that and weave that into a script that then creates an enjoyable story for people that aren't familiar with the source material. And that couldn't be hard to do. Like, I know almost everyone struggles with playtesting for games, but that's because it's like one guy on his own writing a game. If you're a movie studio, you can hire interns to play games. It'll be fine. It'll be fun. People will commit to it. And I think you're right. That would be like... It's just, it'd be a really reliable way to ensure that, that anything you show feels right in the universe. It's dumb because people actually do play that way. And it'll be funny. And I yeah. think you need comedy in anything that's D&D. Because if it's not self-referential, hilarious garbage, I don't think it'll land well. You can't take it seriously. But don't go and change stuff that's been in the rule books for 30 years. You know, because you can. Like, that's just going to upset people yeah change just because you can is never gonna be good change yeah well i mean apart from um joe uh manganelli manganelli i can never say probably in uh being involved Geneva, in never, 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 never. yeah thanks ryan uh you've also got the screenwriter being uh, david leslie johnson mcgoldrick what a name uh, whose credits include uh, orphan red riding hood wrath of titans conjuring 2 aquaman conjuring 3 and aquaman 2 uh, he's also done um, walk some some stuff for Walking Dead and Mob City on TV. So, not a bad record. Um, not a great record, but not a bad one. Not a bad one. Yeah. Aquaman so, came up or three times more often than I'd like to hear it. Yeah, well, he's done two Aquaman. Well, he's done the original. Uh, he he co-wrote the original, uh, and he's obviously working on the the sequel. Uh, and, oh, he co-wrote, I should that say. Was the show. Yeah, right. Uh, the Conjuring <laughs> stuff as well. But, I don't like uh, Conjuring, but yeah. Yeah, and Orphan wasn't bad way back when. Yeah, no, that was, it was different. It was different. Uh, but yeah, so he's, he's got a few few things under his belt. So it's not in bad hands, and it's just going to be a case of uh, how they deal with the, the, the source material. I, hopefully, they've learnt, though. Because as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been a decent adaptation. The 1980s cartoon series the dungeons and dragons cartoon series is i mean it's a cartoon it's fun 
the thief is called a thief once in the opening scene and is never called a thief ever again and never steals anything because, you know, children's TV show. Uh, but it was a bit of fun in the 80s. It was kind of nice, but I can't say it's a particularly good representation of Dungeons and Dragons. Based uh, on that glowing review, I probably won't go look it up to watch myself. But yeah, it's fun. Know. It's fun. Like, if you have kids... Uh, or, you know, nieces, nephews, whatever. Like, it's a fun one to sit down and watch with them. Much like the, the old Conan the Adventure cartoons. Same sort of vein. Uh, it, it's a bit of fun. The films, can, by and large, go die in a hole. Uh, along with uh, Mutant Chronicles. Uh, one, that, one that's always sort of got me is, is, is how White Wolf, Onyx Path, Paradox, whoever, whoever has that license at the moment, hasn't pushed for movies of vampire like actually that reminds me no there is there is vampire a tv show of vampire oh, yeah God, i forgot about it. yeah i've got it on dvd that's a, thank you for reminding me yeah the kindred uh they only did one season before it got axed it, it was a real it's slow just, start it was a very low slow start but it was good because it, it was like whatever it was san francisco and you've got the different clans the ventru gangrel all that sort of stuff it's there yeah it came out in the i'm gonna say early to mid 90s uh yeah look it up i mean it's as i said the first the pilot is terrible uh it does get a bit better but it's sort of a neat because it shows uh you know a lot of the the the, the clans and all the stuff that's in the books but yeah it could have been a lot better yeah but it's just it's it's just the right setting for like a sort of long format tv series i think yeah and absolutely but it's, again, I think I think that's you hit the nail on the head when you started this. And this, because I mean, you look at look at films and TV shows that adapt fantasy books. They turn out well because there's that backbone of a story that was always there that that did well. Uh, you know, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, all that sort of stuff. But when you take an open sandbox and you're just taking a rule set, then there's no story to convert. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, think, think, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's where it falls apart. Yeah. yeah, and I think. That's what Wizards of the Coast are going to need to do with this next D and D film, uh, and, and as much as they're going to have to do it with Magic the Gathering as well, is is find that backbone story um, that's going to engage everybody, not just trust that you know a film that has a few rules in it is going to work. Yeah, and and that's that's I mean, I think the the magic series is really going to be the proving grounds for wizards looking at their other things to move into stuff yeah and... like the monopoly movie <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing pretty sure that's a thing isn't it ethan there isn't monopoly movie coming out yep <laughs> it's about a guy who goes out one night and gets drunk i think it was and wakes up in the morning and he's in monopoly land can you that say Jumanji? Hang on, what? That, that was the original synopsis for it, that for when Ridley Scott was He's attached to it. He's in Monopoly Land. Ridley yep. Scott was attached to it. That's... <laughs> he can do better. He can't be that desperate for money, can he? <laughs> Monopoly Land. I'm Monopoly gonna, Land. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tossing in my sleep, wrenched in nightmares. It's like, Monopoly Land. No, no. It was, it was, how daft? What? Yep. <laughs> Alright, so I guess, I mean, you've never played any tabletop role playing, have you, Ethan? I've done a little bit. Done a little bit? What did you play? I don't know. It was like fucking, how many years ago now? Well, you're Seven only four. years ago? You're only four, so that's a lie. I was negative two. I was yeah. a semen. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I don't know. It wasn't a lie. I've met players who would continue to play individuals. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be behind that. All right, so if you could if you could pick one rule system, Ryan, to to be turned paranoia. into paranoia. Okay. End of a... conversation. It would be the greatest thing to put into a movie, a TV series. Um, they did a trailer for a video game they're making of it a, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, um, and it was hilarious, and it would translate so well into any literally any format. They want to do it in smoke signals. I want. All right, well, well, all right. So here's one: What movie would you like to see turn into a tabletop game, or TV show? Movie or TV show that you want to see made into a tabletop game? Uh, they keep promising it, but they're still waiting for them to deliver, and that's um, Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. Yeah, those would be good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw there's some movement on Labyrinth. Uh, well, but wasn't the like a Kickstarter one for it? 
Yeah, no, but Dark Crystal was supposed to come out a while ago. I think it sort of fell off by the wayside. I'm not sure. But uh, there's also a Labyrinth one on the way, which has its own rules, or I think you can use it with existing rules. Uh, oh, no, no, there, there is a Dark Crystal, like, board game, card game. I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean yeah, an actual like, role-playing role game. Not actual role-playing. Ah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, and if I had to pick one, so there's an old Woody Harrelson movie called Defendor. Oh, about a kind of special guy who believes he's a superhero and goes fighting crime with like a club and it's incredible i think that universe of regular people standing up to be heroes sort of like um kick-ass kind of just they're not super at all they're just vigilantes running around doing stuff i think that would make a good setting for a system uh, that would sort of cut a lot of the magic out of it and just be deep gritty grungy stuff like playing world of darkness mortals so let's let's all just meet halfway monsters. here let's just all meet halfway here and say big trouble in little china the rpg yep done oh boy yep. agreed <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> didn't honest, even the, the, i the didn't one, even think of that yep. <laughs> the one movie i would like to go to an rpg would be shrek i think that'd be great get out just shrek get the RPG fuck out. just get the fuck great. out get out why you're first, the worst person first what? that'd be fucking great all you do is sit in your house and bitch about your swamp. You have your know? swamp as vampire. You go on the adventure. You got to rescue the princess. You do all that sort of stuff. A Shrek board game. You could do that in Pathfinder. You do not come this out. You leave this zone, and we'll see how many comments there are about a fucking Shrek board game. And you watch people. We're talking about board games. We're talking about role playing games. So I say role playing, role playing. Yeah, but you could do that. You could do that already. You could do it. You might not know this, but in almost every role playing book, there's a thing they call black boxes, small like boxes with little important asides or explanations of rules and if a shrek roleplay game if someone out there makes this and they don't have a black box saying that you must start every single session with smash mouth i'm not buying it but if you put that <laughs> oh, in i'll it. consider it <laughs> that's gonna start you have to start with smash mouth and the song has to be put on repeat the entire time through the whole game you listen to that one song non-stop that's your shrek rpg make sure you're like Leave some towels on the bathroom floor for a good yep. couple of months first to get that good swamp. Oh yeah, hanging yep. around. I could, I could see it working. Yeah, see, really, see, Toby, be, Toby, it'd be a high game. immersion game, and that's immersion see. role playing is growing. People are getting into atmospheric games, so Smash Mouth Ryan, and Swamp Water. I'm he'll dead. never get a girlfriend if you encourage him to leave those towels on his bathroom floor. <laughs> 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 Never go wrong with Shrek. Everybody <laughs> loves Shrek. All right, you can never go wrong with it. I don't. Fuck off. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. So that's uh, that's RPGs on film, TV screen. Uh, look, yeah, check out the three D and D movies if you're a masochist. You've also got the, uh, as I said, the uh, Mutant Chronicles film. You can do that. There's the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, and then there's the Kindred. Uh, TV show, which you can also pick up on DVD. There's probably more, so if we've missed some, let us know. Put them in the comments, because that'd be kind of cool to follow up on. Uh, but um, what have we got coming between now and next fortnight, Ethan? Some uh, movies. Some movies. Yeah, some movies. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a sec. What have we got? We've got The Dark on Netflix. I'm going to be watching that. Keen for that. We got, what's it, June? It is. So, next week, we have Toy Story 4 is out. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. And the new week. Child's Play. I also forgot that was next week. It's not yep. It's in the, the week after that is Annabelle Comes Home. I'm probably watching that. And then five days after that, on a Monday, Spider Man Far From Home comes out. Why? Why Ooh, a Monday? On a Monday. So that's on what, a the Monday. 20... And that's on the 2nd. First right. or 2nd of July. Okay. That's the 1st. It's because it, the, the release that got bumped up for America, so they were like, oh, we better bump it up for Australia as well. Mm. So I'm probably watching that that night, so probably no podcast on that Monday night. Yeah, we'll we do it the next <laughs> night when it's still yeah. fresh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. All right, well, we'll definitely have something to talk about. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely next podcast. Okay, cool. All right, well, we're going to thank everybody for tuning in and listening. It's much appreciated. A uh, huge thank you to our Patreon supporters who help make this podcast possible. If you've got any questions, ideas, abuse, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Um, it's tradition for uh, the new person to sing their way out of the episode. So uh, 
You ready for this run? Always. I was born ready. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you <laughs> all for coming to us. Hope you enjoyed our mindless banter. Please leave a comment and visit Patreon. Holy oh, shit. We just got upstaged to like the yeah. 10th. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Catch you next fortnight. Have fun, everyone. <laughs>